The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned, but the one who does not believe is condemned already for not having believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light so that the deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that the deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. So we have arrived at uh, the midpoint of our Lenten journey, our training season for us to prepare for the glory of Easter and to truly be able to be messengers of hope, that we are strengthened as disciples, not just Easter Sunday being the celebration and then we kind of just move on, but truly we open our hearts to him who transforms our lives and then we can be those messengers of hope and light and mercy and forgiveness. And over these weeks of Lent, we've been using various ways to be able to um, share and invite us during this training season. First week of uh, our Lenten journey, I used that a night bright basketball, you know, one that glows in the dark. And I talked about the fact that Lent is this chance for us as we enter in this season of training to place ourselves in that light so that we may receive the light of Christ and then radiate his light, his love, in the things that we do. And to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we are alive, just like that ball is filled with air and then it bounces, that we're alive with the love of faith. A couple of weeks ago, Deacon Dennis preached and he showed a video clip from Monty Python about marching in the square. A sergeant with a group of his soldiers were going to march the square and he was asking them, you know, what else would you rather be doing than this? And uh, one of them said, well, I'd like to be reading a book. He said, fine, go ahead and do that. Another one, he said, is there anyone else who'd rather be doing something else? He said, Another soldier put up their hand and said, well, I'm learning how to play the piano. I'd rather be doing that. He said, go ahead. Then he told the rest of the group, he said, you probably want to go to the movies instead of marching up and down the square. And they all said, yeah, and he let him go. And the sergeant was the only one left. And sometimes we think, what else would we rather be doing than being at Mass? Maybe sleeping, since we lost an hour, but maybe we'd be doing something else. And so, you know, this is the challenge of the Lenten journey and our faith, to try to make sure that we place Christ and faith first in our lives to give us that direction and guidance, that we become the fullest people who God has made us to be. But we always have other things that we would sometimes rather be doing. Whether it's, you know, in the busyness of our lives, uh, relaxing, resting, we're running from one thing to the next, and we're always doing something else. And sometimes faith gets left on the back burner. Sometimes faith kind of gets left to the side. And Lent is that reminder to us to place Christ first. That there is this sense of marching, and we have some boots by the cross. That we are marching as disciples, 
to bring the love of Christ to those around us, to those who are in need. And that's really the fulfillment of our lives. And that's what Lent is, is this training so that we can get uh, practiced and strengthened to be messengers marching with the good news of salvation to all those who need it. And then last weekend, Father Pedro uh, preached about and had his medal that he's hung uh, on the cross, inspired by uh, the Winter Olympics. Did you know that Father Pedro was a world-class loser? He asked me after 9 o'clock Mass, what is that? I said, I said bobsled, just one person. Yeah. <laughs> He's sliding down. Snowboard is more safety. It's, it's, what's that? Safe. It's not safe. No, it's very no dangerous. Safe. <laughs> yeah. So he, he wasn't really. But, uh, but the perseverance, dedication, commitment, saying yes to something and saying no as an athlete to discipline oneself, Lent is also that. We say yes to certain things that will grow and nurture and strengthen our faith and our relationship with Christ. And then we say no to other things. And that's not also just saying yes or no to good versus bad, but it's between a good, better, and best. And our faith is the best above everything else in our lives because that gives us order and focus and purpose and energy and strength that never never fades away. So this weekend, <clears throat> I want to, as we enter kind of the halfway mark, is this clock. This is from the guest room at the rectory. But this represents what uh, some of you may have or know about, about atomic clocks. Now, atomic clocks keep the most precise time. I won't get into the science of it, but most accurate time because Regular clocks or your clock on your computer or different things will lose accurate time. And so after over time, you might have to reset the clock. Well, most of the clocks that you can buy in the stores that say they're atomic clocks are actually radio clocks that receive a signal from an atomic clock, and in this case in North America, in Colorado. There's an atomic clock there that transmits a radio signal to radio clocks, whether it's a wristwatch version, kind of an alarm clock version or wall, and it sends a signal of the accurate time. And once a day, these radio clocks tune into that signal and correct itself time, so that they're always as accurate as possible. So that when you look at these radio clocks, you know it's the exact time. Well, for us during Lent, we can get a little bit off course. We can get a little bit off schedule and off time in terms of the li our lives of faith and being these disciples, these ambassadors of Christ, sharing the good news. And so we have to find that signal of Christ's love. As in the Gospel, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you know, that God so loved the world that he sent his only son, not to condemn the world, but to save it, to bring life and light. And for Lent, as we are in this training season, we have to attune ourselves to this signal of Christ's love, his mercy, his forgiveness, his freedom, and his joy. If we don't, if we only do that a couple times a year or once a week, we're going to be out of sync. We're going to be in the wrong time. And so every day through our prayer, during the season of Lent, the Sacrament of Reconciliation, all the confession times are in the bulletin. There's still time left to be able to go. Yesterday morning, Father Pedro and I were hearing first reconciliations. We have our second group going through this month of March. And it was beautiful to see these young people, their families, their siblings going to reconciliation. One of them, uh, the parents introduced their child. So even before the reconciliation, this child is coming. I was telling him, I said, you have already sinned. He's wearing a Montreal Canadian sweater. The way we retune our clocks, our faith clocks, our hearts, our souls to Christ 
is by engaging in these moments of grace during Lent, like reconciliation, like Mass, like on Friday nights in which we have confessions, Mass, and the way of the cross, like our faith movie afternoon today at 3 o'clock where we look at the movie Popiwuszko about this Polish priest who was killed by the communists during the Solidarity Movement in the early 1980s. He's on his way to becoming a saint. He was 37 years old when he died. All these different ways in which we tune in and experience Christ's love that changes us, that sets us back on course, sets us on the right time to be those messengers of God's everlasting love. On uh, Friday night, I led the Stations of the Cross. I had a really, I had actually a very good crowd Friday night for the Stations, Mass and Stations. And as we got to the fifth station, I was reading the reflection on it, and it was, the fifth station is Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. And the reflection in particular talked about the fact that, you know, Jesus speaking to us saying, I have no strength left. You know, you have to help me carry this cross that, that you know, crushes me. And you help it by helping those who are in need. You lift my burden. And that, that touched me during that time of prayer. But that only happened because I took the time. We know where we can encounter the grace of the Lord, and we need Him so that we're on right course, we're on right track, we're celebrating the gift of Christ's love. So as we continue in our Mass this morning, you know, what are the special things that maybe you have done already, but you can still do over this next journey and second half of Lent, so that we can truly not only celebrate Easter with family and friends and as a parish, but live the Easter message, a message of light, a message of hope, of compassion and mercy. We don't want to tune out. We need to tune in to that signal each and every day. Christ loves us, and he calls us to love one another. My time is up. Mm -hmm.